Manuel, great to have you back for online worship once again. Hope you had a wonderful week. We are going to have a Zoom coffee hour today. Check the link on Community Life from 11.30 to noon. We're going to have a time to kibitz with one another. So bring a cup of coffee and uh, we'll have that half hour time just to connect uh, with one another. Outdoor worship is beginning at Emmanuel. We're taking those initial steps to begin our phasing in of having worship together. It's much safer to be outdoors and uh, it's gonna start up, Lord willing, Sunday, October 4th, 8 a.m. outdoors between Witherspoon Hall and the back of the administration uh, building. Um, reservations are gonna be required and we'll be telling you shortly how to do that. Uh, because the seating will be limited because of uh, social distancing uh, to just 50 seats. But we're going to be sending you out all the information shortly. Be looking to that either on Facebook, um, our website, uh, email, or uh, being mailed out to you. One of the ways uh, that we're going to work on greeting one another in a socially distanced way um, is uh, we've had Joy Hager create our own Emmanuel secret greeting sign. It goes like this. I P C. I've been practicing myself, but instead of uh, shaking hands, we can't do that. Uh, we'd love to hug one another. We can't do that. We can only do air hugs. We can do the bowing sign. Um, we can do the waving or we can do the I P C. But uh, anyway, Emmanuel, we'll give you more details about that. Casa Maria was a smashing success once again. Thank you for your generosity to feeding the hungry. That's what Christ calls us to do. And uh, thank you for uh, helping with that. And also we wanna thank you for your giving. It keeps us going. It helps us able to carry out the ministry and the mission of Christ. Thank you, Emmanuel. We're filled with gratitude for you. Let's now go before the Lord in prayer together. Lord God, you have brought us into safety into this new day. Preserve us, Lord, with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose all through Christ Jesus, our crucified, risen, and reigning Lord. And it's in his name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen.
Please join us in the call to worship from Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you at a time of distress. The rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. Good morning. This week, we asked some children, how do you stop being angry with someone? Here's what they had to say. Phoebe, how do you stop being angry at someone? Um, I read a while before I talk to them again. Say, how do you stop being angry with someone? When someone says sorry to me, then I say, oh, it's okay, then I give them a hug. I'm sorry for taking the bucket from you, I said, it's okay, when I hug them. <laughs> Good job. When you hug them, how do you feel? Happy. Good job, Tay Tay. Hey, Ava. How do you stop being angry with someone? I stop being angry usually, like, I'll go to my mom and be like, I'm really mad. Like, I'm mad at someone. She'll usually just tell me to forget it. Go on, it's fine. And that's usually the case. So. so you reach out to your mom and you talk it out and then you feel better. Yeah, that's a good way. When I get angry at somebody, I go like this. That's how I go. Taking a deep breath. Thanks for giving us some ideas how to be more forgiving. In the Old Testament, Micah reminds us that God will not stay angry with people. God will love us no matter what. With your ideas, we can all work at being better at loving and forgiving one another. Take care. Be good to each other. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, Word made flesh, let us come to your written word open to being surprised. Silence our agendas, banish our assumptions, melt our apathy, confound our expectations, clear the cobwebs, penetrate the corners of our hearts with your word. We know, O oh God, that you can, and we pray that you will, and we wait for great anticipation. Amen. Well, we saw last week our fellow pilgrim Christian made it safely to the other side of the swamp of despond with the help of help. His journey continued, yet still hampered by his cumbersome burden. So Christian continued on toward the wicket gate as he was instructed. And along the way, he encountered a man named Mr. Worldly Wise. The two struck up a conversation and Christian shared about his burden and setbacks. If you don't mind, I have some advice for you, said Mr. Worldly Wise. You've got to get rid of that burden because as long as you have it, you'll never have peace of mind or be able to enjoy the blessings that God has given you. That's exactly what I wanna do, agreed Christian, but I just can't get rid of my burden on my own and I don't know of anyone in our country who can get this off my shoulders but my goal remains to get this burden off of my back. Who told you that you had to come this way to unburden yourself? A very honorable man named Evangelist told me so. Mr. Worldly Wise's face puckered. Ah, Evangelist. I most certainly disapprove of the advice that he's given you, Christian. 
I can't think of a more dangerous or difficult way to get that burden off your back. It looks and it smells like you have the mud of the swamp of despond on you. And if you continue in this way, your sorrows are going to multiply. Perils, hunger, lions, darkness, dungeons, death, and who knows what else will await you. Sir, you don't understand. This burden on my back is greater than all the things that you mentioned. Christian then shook his head. No, I've given this great thought and I don't care what perils meet me along the path. I must be rid of this terrible burden. May I suggest another way to you, Christian? It's a way filled with safety and friendship and contentment with no dangers. It's just a short distance away over at the the village of morality. Ask for a man named Legality, and he can help you with your great burden. And his son, Civility, uh, who's a very courteous boy, he will assist you as well. In fact, you may just want to settle down in that village. The houses there of the highest quality, they're, they're quite affordable too. Just take the path that up that high hill over there. Well, Christian listened to Mr. Worldly Wise and diverged from his current path and approached the hill that he talked of. But the thing was, the closer the Christian got, the steeper the incline became. In fact, he felt as if the very mountain itself would fall upon him. Christian's burden seemed heavier than it ever had been before. Fire came crashing from the mountain. When all seemed to be lost for Christian, evangelist appeared again. Christian was relieved, but he also was ashamed that he departed from evangelist's directions. Evangelist listened to Christian's story, and then he let him know a little bit more about Mr. Worldly Wise and his motives. He thought only of the things of this world, and above all, the cross was a great offense to him. Christian, you can't be released of this burden you're under by doing good things or proving to all how worthy and admirable you are. You must go to a very different mountain, to the mountain with the cross atop it. There you will find the release that you're looking for, but be careful not to turn aside again from your path. Evangelist encouraged him with a smile, and he said, Godspeed, Christian. Well, Christian retraced his steps and made it to the wicket gate, where goodwill greeted him there. A door is open to you, Christian, that no person can shut. He walked in, and then goodwill walked with Christian, teaching him many things that would help him on his journey what is good, and also what's good to avoid. Goodwill then stopped and pointed, do you see that narrow way up there ahead, Christian? That's the way that you must go. This path was dug out and laid by the patriarchs, the prophets, and by Christ himself. There are no turns. It is a straight and narrow path, and the way is hard. Now, there will be some side paths and detours that would lead you astray. Ignore them. Pass straight ahead along the holy way. Now, in my dream, the highway, the holy highway that Christian was to travel, was fenced in on both sides with a wall called salvation. With all of his might, with his burden crushing down upon him, Christian plodded his way up with great difficulty and exertion. He came upon a small hill, and atop the hill stood the cross that he was told of. And a little below, at the bottom of the hill, was a stone tomb. As Christian approached the cross, his burden began to be loosened from his shoulders, and it fell off his back. The burden tumbled down the mountain until it came to the mouth of the tomb where it fell inside and it was never seen again. Christian was free. He cried and overjoyed, 
proclaimed, Christ has given me rest by his sorrow and life by his death. Three bright and shining ones approached and greeted him. Peace be to you, Christian. One declared that his sins were forgiven. Another took Christian's ragged clothes and gave him a new set. The third anointed Christian's forehead and gave him a scroll. Look upon this scroll as you run and deliver it when you reach the celestial city. And with that, the shining ones went on their way. Let's hear now from today's scripture readings. First, from the prophet Micah, chapter 7, verses 18 through 20. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of your possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in showing clemency. He will again have compassion upon us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and unswerving loyalty to Abraham as you have sworn to our ancestors from the days of old. And our second reading comes from Peter's first letter, chapter 2, verses 24 through 25. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were all going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God endures forever. Thanks be to God. One of my all-time favorite movies is The Mission. It has an all-star cast of Jeremy Irons, Robert De Niro, and Liam Neeson. And it's got an incredible soundtrack by Ennio Morricone. Now, Robert De Niro's character, Captain Rodrigo Mendoza, He's introduced early in the film as a slave trader. He also murdered his own brother out of revenge. The formerly proud and powerful man is utterly broken and despondent. The Jesuit missionary Gabriel, played by Jeremy Irons, challenges the captain to choose his penance just as he chose his crime. He agrees. They go off to the jungle and tied to Mendoza is a large netted sack crammed with swords, armor, and other weapons which represent Mendoza's old life. Let's see what eventually happens to Mendoza's burden. To many, this is one of the most moving scenes in all of cinematic history. Enjoy.
Burdens. What's your burden? What's pressing down upon you right now? What do you need release from? We all have baggage in our lives that we carry around with us, some more than others. It could be childhood wounds, shame, disloyalties, hatred, discouragement, exhaustion, bad habits, or that addiction you just can't seem to shake. Whatever your burden is, come to the holy way with your burdens and your baggage and kneel down at the cross with Christian. Find the release you've been longing for. Be unshackled from the weights that get in the way of your relationship with God and your relationship with others. Come to Christ. Now let me share something extremely important with you. You can't do it. You can't do it with your own blood, sweat, and tears. But the blood, the sweat, and the tears of Christ on the cross can. In him, in Christ, you're free. You can stop trying so hard. You're released from trying so hard to prove to God, to others and to yourself, what a fine person you are, how worthy you are, that you've got your act together, that you've got it all figured out on your own. Thank you very much. You can stop waving for attention. Look at me, look at me. Look how I'm doing. Stop. 
rest, kneel. And really, anything that you can do in your life, no matter how much it is, that's not really yours anyway. God gave you the strength that you already have. It's God, not you. You see, there's freedom in this honesty of kneeling at the cross, of admitting that we are spiritually bankrupt. You must do this, God, I can't. Now, this doesn't mean that we stop struggling, no. We struggle not to be saved or to be accepted or applauded by others. No, we joyfully struggle now because God has begun to save us. There is hope. The burden is lifted. Now, we can get used to our burdens in our lives, maybe even comfortable with them in a strange sort of way. We may even try to get them back from God when we've originally given them to him. They can become a part of our identity, our constant companions on our journey. We forget what our lives would be like without our burdens, or we feel resigned to living our life with our burdens. Now, I'm not talking what, about what the Apostle Paul calls the thorn in our flesh. God says to us about this thorn in our flesh, my grace is sufficient for you. So we must, along with Paul, learn to live with our thorns in the flesh, but I'm not talking about that here. Our burdens are different. Our burdens must go. These are the things we must be rid of in our lives. Now, when Christian realized that it is only God that can relieve the burden of our sins and selfishness, we can't do it ourselves, no matter how hard we try. One of the most beautiful and challenging and freeing words in all of Scripture is the word forgiveness. In Hebrew, the word forgiven literally means lifted off. When we confess our sin to God, he lifts off of our shoulders and rolls away our burdens and they disappear. You see, when God forgives, he covers our sin and shields us from judgment. In other words, when we stop trying to cover up, then God covers us. When God forgives, he erases our debts and our accrued fees that we could never pay off. We are credited with Christ's righteousness. You see, God removes our sins from us. As far as the east is from the west, the scriptures say. He takes it off our back. He not only does that, he tramples upon it, and then he heaves it over his back into the depths of the sea. The prophet Isaiah says that God sweeps away our transgressions like the rising sun burns away the morning mist. When God forgives, God completely washes away the stain of our guilt and cleanses us of our sin so that we are washed whiter than the snow. We may still suffer the consequences of our sin and our decisions, but the sin itself has been entirely eradicated past, present, and future. God no longer holds it against us. It is nailed to the cross. Somehow, some way, the death and the resurrection of Jesus, the Son of God, frees us from our selfishness, frees us from ourselves, and frees us to live the way that God designed us to live. Forgiven, we are free to be forgiving. Forgiven and forgiving. That could be a good definition of a Christian. You see, the good news is that God wants to do this for us. God delights in showing mercy and clemency, as our passage says. God's majesty is most clearly shown by his grace, not in his judgment. Our burden is lifted, and then we are freed to daily take up our cross and follow Christ. This is an empowering weight that is now upon us. Unburdened, we now can struggle forward. Will more challenges come in our life? Absolutely. 
New burdens will be laid upon us. We'll make new mistakes. But God can and will take those from us too. God will give us release and freedom once again. But it's all God. It's all grace. And as the Apostle Peter, one forgiven himself for denying Christ, reminds us what it is all about, Emmanuel. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, free from sins, we might Live for righteousness. Amen. I walk through a garden in the morning. Walked right into a change No words were spoken Just a feeling And I cannot explain But I I can feel the difference When it comes and it blows Where it comes from I don't know To look for a reason Might just kill it And I cannot explain But I can feel the difference Let us go now before the Lord in prayer. Father, we give you thanks for your love and forgiveness. Teach us to forgive you as you have forgiven us, to be merciful and yet to seek justice. We ask you to strengthen and guide all who are in positions of trust, in all places of authority, all who make decisions concerning our future. We pray for integrity and fairness within our world, that no one is counted unworthy or of little importance. We remember all who are impoverished or marginalized, all who cry for justice, and all who work for freedom and dignity for everyone. Thank you for all you have given to us. We ask you to bless our homes and families with your presence, love, and peace. We pray for homes where there is unrest, fear, or illness. We remember all of those whose wounds have no cure, for those struggling with the virus and their family members. Help us, Lord. Guide and comfort us. Amen.
please join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Receive the charge of benediction. Surrender. Yield. Let go. Stop forcing and clawing and proving. As C.S. Lewis put it long ago, say, you must do this, God, I cannot. You never stand taller than when you kneel at the cross. Unload your burdens. Watch them roll into that empty tomb. Find the power of emptiness. Stand. Take up your cross. Breathe in the breath of the Spirit. Together, let us continue following Christ along the pilgrim's way. And now the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you now in this moment and always. And all God's pilgrims said, Amen.